Hey guys, welcome to the Nate Take. I'm Nathan, and today I'm going to be giving you my review for the OHP Wi-Fi OBD2 scanner. So these scan tools are a really awesome invention. Uh, most scan tools, professional grade scan tools, you're looking to spend five thousand plus dollars on them. These budget options that you can find online on Amazon are a good alternative. Now you may have heard about the Blue Driver scan tool. It's around $100 and it serves the same, same functionality as this. That particular brand has been around for quite a while and has proven to be a good tool. However, if you're looking to spend less than $100, other options are out there. Now do be aware that it has a specific shaped connector on it. Uh, the listing said that it was for Fords, Mazdas, Lincolns, and Mercury vehicles only. So just be aware, if it has this shape connector in it, it'll probably work on your vehicle. So the beauty of these, like I said, is that they cost less than traditional scan tools. And the functionality of them, from my experience, seems to be about the same. When paired up with the right software, which in my case I use Forescan, this reader here can read all the sensors, it can run tests, and it can run diagnostics on the vehicle, no problem at all. All the functionalities of Forescan work correctly with this reader. Now I have two complaints about this. My own fault is getting the Wi-Fi version. I would probably go with the Bluetooth version next time. Only reason being is that on an Android device, the Wi-Fi version disables the data connection, so you're not able to look up the error codes while you're scanning the vehicle. You have to disconnect the scanner and then go and look up your error codes. That's a bit of an inconvenience, but then again, that's my fault. I should have thought of that whenever I purchased it. My second complaint is the design has to do with the design. So on my particular vehicle, the wide side of the OBD connection here is facing up. So I have to plug it in this way. However, on this side of the tool, there's indicator lights. So I can't see these indicator lights. They're facing down. If I want to see them, I have to get down on the floorboard and look up at it. That's a bit of an inconvenience. I don't know if it's because of the design of here or if that's just particular to this vehicle. For some reason, Ford decided to put the OBD connector the other way. I'm going to assume that that has to do with the scanner, but I'm not 100% sure. It'll depend. It, just be aware of that when you go and purchase it. Functionality-wise, I have no complaints with this scanner. <clears throat> so let's go over a couple of the features that it has. Let's just take a good look at the outside of this tool. As I said before, it has a standard OBD2 connection on it. It has a switch here on the back that'll go from HS CAN to MS CAN and your software that you're using will tell you which one to put it on. Uh, it's got indicator lights up top here, and then it's just a hard plastic shell. This here could probably take us some abuse. You could probably throw it in your glove box and not have to worry about it breaking it. This is a metal switch back here, not plastic. Oh, that is a good sign as well. It's got this little rubber plug here, but that has nothing to do with this particular device. I suspect what it is is that they use the same shell for their USB, version as well, so they just put a plug there where the USB cord would normally come out. So let me go ahead and show you how to use it. Alright, so we take you off the tripod, we have our scanner right here, we go up under the dash, again this is on a 2006 F-150, you can see the OBD port hopefully right there. So you take it, you match up the sides of the connector, you push it in place. Now I'll put you under here, you can see the indicator lights that are on there, indicates that it is working. So let's come back up here. So this scanner is compatible with any device that has Wi-Fi, so it's compatible with Android, iOS, and Windows. I will say I've not been able to get it to work properly with Linux, but that's just because Linux does not have an OBD software that I can find. All right, so to connect the scanner to your phone or whatever device you're using to read it, all you have to do is enter the device, go up here to your Wi-Fi settings. As you can see, mine's already connected automatically right there. It's connected to Wi-Fi OBD2, so I don't need to do anything. Click on your software of choice. Like I said, I'm using Forescan, and now you will see it's connecting. Okay, so now we're connected. In order to use it, what we have to do is we have to take our key, put it into the ignition, turn the ignition to the on position, but do not start the engine. Okay, so now what we can do is we can click on errors and then up here in the corner you're going to see that little search button, hit that. 
And as you can see, it could successfully read all the DTCs on these various modules. So let's go over the modules that it will read real quick. This is not a comp comprehensive list, but all these modules in my truck, it can read. Powertrain control module, onboard diagnostics, 4x4 control module, anti-lock braking system, instrument cluster, and your restraint control module. This isn't a review of the 4Scan software, but I'll go over a couple things just so you can see the scanner working. So if we go to vehicle here, you can see that it gives us all sorts of information about our vehicle, about the various modules that it can check, gives you part numbers and other good information. You can see it gives you information about the truck itself right here. It's a three valve engine, 5.4 liter gasoline automatic. All right, so let's go ahead and click on table here, view parameters in table mode. So if we click on that, you can see all these parameters that I've already put in. AC pressure switch, that's parametric pressure, fuel level, fuel pump, and battery positive voltage. And you can put in a bunch more. If we go here and we look at the parameters we can add, you can see that there's a big, long list. That is a good list. So these are all the various sensors and parameters that it can read. Let's go ahead and type in transmission. All right, so you can see You've got several for several options here for transmission. Um, let's do transmission temperatures. Let's see. Let's just pick one of these here. Let's do uh, transmission range. All right. So this here will tell us which gear it's in. So we'll go back here again. This is not a software overview. Uh, let's add another one. Let's do temperature. Let's let's look at their various the temperature ones. Outside temperature, I like that. And let's do catalytic converter temperature. All right. So now we can go back, hit play again, and you can see what it's going to show us here. Outside temperature is 95. Catalytic converter temperature is 90 right now, and we are in park. So what we'll do is we can go ahead and start the truck. I will warn you, it may get a little loud because my truck is a little noisy. All right, so assuming you guys can still hear me, you can see the catalytic converter temperature has gone up. Now what we'll do, now what I'll do is I'll go ahead and shift, see if it changes the transmission range. There's reverse. Neutral, there we go, it updated, and drive. It's got overdrive on right now, we can switch that off, it goes into just drive. Second, and first. So as you can see, it's able to read all of that well. You can see the voltage is up now, and the air conditioner is on. Um, you can see the catalytic converter temperature. It's, it's able to read pretty much everything, which is important for a scan tool. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to go down here to tests. This here is uh, a very nice functionality. Key on engine running on demand self-test. All right, so we'll go ahead and hit, select the key on engine running on demand test, hit the play button, and let it run its test. Press and release the brake pedal. Turn the steering wheel one half turn and release. Cycle the overdrive, just like that. And there we go. So the oil temperature sensor out of self-test range. And the reason for that is that the truck was not fully warmed up whenever I ran this test, but that's all right. It's not going to cause any particular issues. Okay, so let's go back to tests. Now, one cool feature about this is it has an instrument cluster test right here. You see that one right there. If we hit that, Let's hit the information so we can see. Make sure the vehicle is not moving. All right, we're gonna go and run that. I'm gonna take you off the tripod just so you can see what's gonna happen. So this test here is a good one to run if you think that there might be an issue with your instrument panel. I'm gonna hit the play button on this. Make sure the vehicle's not moving. We already did that. And now you can see 
it tests everything on your instrument panel. See the gauges all move, so if you're concerned that one of your gauges may be faulty, you can run this test and see if the gauge doesn't move, then it certainly is faulty. So as you can see, test completed successfully, no errors found. So like I said, that particular test there could save you a lot of pain because a, it's very hard to troubleshoot an instrument cluster gauge. So if you can do that and all the gauges move properly, then you know that it's not the instrument cl cluster gauge. So last test I want to run is the key, key on engine off demand self test. I've turned the engine off, I've got the key in the on position, and now I'm going to hit the play. Make sure of these things here, vehicles not moving, transmission park in neutral, and that the parking brake is on. So I heard the AC compressor clutch engage and disengage, and a couple other clicks and things from under the hood. We know that it was working. Test completed successfully, no errors found. That's always a good thing to, good thing to uh, have. Okay, so all the tests ran successfully. The scanner adapter didn't have any issues. So we'll go back to table, and if we hit play now, you can see everything's still working. Even though the vehicle's off, it's still reading the temperatures of the catalytic converters as they cool, and the outdoor temperature. As you, gee whiz, it's risen up two degrees since I started this video. Wow, that's Florida for you. Anyway, so that's about it as far as functionality, so let's go ahead and wrap up this review. So we've proven that this here does actually work. It does what it says it will do, and I have not had any issues over the last month using it. So now the question is, why would you want to get one of these whenever you can go down to your local Walmart and pick up one of these things here, right? One of these. Well, truth of the matter is, this is a piece of trash, okay? This here won't do nearly what this will, and the little tiny bit that it does do, it doesn't do very well. So even though this here is only about $15, it's not worth your money. So I'm sure what, what you're wondering now is how badly will this scan tool break the bank? Well, compared to the scan tool that I tossed, that one was $15 from Walmart. Didn't really do anything at all. This one here does a whole lot of different stuff. It must be quite a bit more expensive. However, this particular one is only $30 on Amazon. So it's about a third the price of, a, of the more popular blue driver that you've probably heard of before. It's only double the cost of the cheap ones that don't do anything. So to me, this here is a good investment. I recently used it on a Ford Transit van that was having issues to make sure it wasn't throwing codes. I've used it on a 2001 F350. I've used it on a 2001 F150. I've used it on, my obviously, my 2006 F150. It works on every vehicle I've plugged it into. So would I recommend this particular scanner? I absolutely would. It does everything as advertised. It works great with all the vehicles I've plugged it into. And you don't have to give away your firstborn child in order to pay for it. I'm going to have a link down in the description where you can purchase this one off Amazon. And yes, that is an affiliate link, so I greatly appreciate it if you purchase it through that particular link. It helps out the channel. I'm sure everybody out there watching this video knows a mechanic friend of theirs who would love to have one of these. If you do, maybe pick one up for Christmas. It's Christmas is coming up. I mean, it's July. It's the beginning of July. Christmas is a very short time from now. So, Pick one of those up for a friend, friends of yours, pick one up for yourself, pick one up for your dog. Everybody needs one. Who knows when you're going to need to scan a vehicle for error codes. <clears throat> Alright guys, that's all I have for today. I want to thank you guys again for watching the channel. I really do appreciate it. I know I've been really bad at upload schedules and I'm not even going to try to commit to a schedule right now because I know that stuff is going to happen that's not going to let me. So real quick guys, I did want to let you know. I have started a BitChute channel over on BitChute.com. Same channel name as what I have here, the Nate Take. BitChute is a platform that's similar to YouTube, but it's more or less like the YouTube back in the old days, when there was less restrictions and less fluff, I guess you could call it. Everything is either tipping the creator or subscribing to them, and that's how they earn revenue. The beauty about that is that the creators don't have to worry about whether or not their content is going to offend advertisers. They can create whatever they want over there, and as long as it doesn't violate the few community guidelines that they do have, it's okay. So I recommend you go check it out. You may find a bunch of other channels over there you enjoy. Definitely go over there and subscribe to my channel. You can subscribe for free, but if you'd like to support me, you can make a monthly pledge or you can make a one-time tip. 
So whatever you would like to do, I would greatly appreciate the support. Okay, now I'm really gonna end this video. So until next time, this is Nathan signing off.